Hi, my name is Sebastian Copeland. I'm, a, I'm an explorer, a photographer, and an environmental advocate. Um, I've, uh, I've grown up as a photographer. I was a commercial photographer for many years and, um, and also an adventurer. I always had a strong interest for adventure and uh, whether that be sailing, mountaineering, rock climbing, a lot of extreme sports. And in the last 10 years, I've specialized in traveling in the polar regions. The North Pole is considered the toughest expedition in the world. It is uh, an environment that has been reached on foot by less than 200 people since it was first reached in 1909. And in 2009, I decided I wanted to walk to the North Pole. And it was both a, the fulfillment of a personal ambition, but also an important way for me to raise awareness um, to the condition in the Arctic, which were so rapidly and have been so dramatically changing. Climate change has zeroed in on the Arctic Sea, which today is 47% the extent that it was 30 years ago. Perhaps more relevant even than the index extent of the sea ice is actually its thickness. In 1909, when Admiral Perry first reached the North Pole, the ice there was about 12 feet in depth. In fact, for most of the century, that's what it's been, up until about 1980. Today, it's half that depth. The ice in the Arctic is comprised of 2 to 3 percent multi-ice, meaning that about 98 percent of the sea ice is constantly exposed to freezing and thawing, freezing and thawing. Only 2 to 3 percent remains seasonably. Um, what is very important about the Arctic is what's called the albedo effect. The albedo effect is the reflectivity um, of the sun's energy onto the ice and back into the atmosphere, which mitigates the heating effect of the sun onto the planet. The, pole re the polar regions in general have been uh, essentially like an air conditioner for the planet. And the Arctic has played a tremendous role in keeping the planet cooler. So the albedo is essentially enabling this, all this heat to get reflected much in the way that wearing a white shirt in the middle of a hot, sunny day uh, in the middle of the summer would keep you cooler than if you had a black shirt, uh, the nature of which would absorb a lot of that heat and make you hotter. Uh, the same is true with the ocean. The dark ocean absorbs the sun's energy and thereby heating uh, not just the air above it, but the ocean itself. Greenland is the number one actor um, in the, um, the consequences of climate change due to its melting ice sheet and the impact that it has on the oceans. The ice on Greenland is, uh, is, is incredibly thick. It sits on a on, on piece of land and it's two miles deep. But Greenland has, um, uh, is an enormous player in the uh, geopolitical consequences of climate change because of the outpour of its glaciers into the ocean. Greenland loses about 200 gigatons of ice a year. And that ice is responsible for what appears to be a minimal amount of ocean rise. Can we deal with one or two or three millimeters of ocean rise a year? Yes, of course we can. Can we deal with that cumulatively and in a manner that is accelerated? Most likely not. Um, Greenland, at the rate that we're going, is going to be responsible for what is conservatively estimated to be an, a, an ocean rise of about four feet within the century. Four feet within the century would be enough to flood the uh, rice-producing paddies in Vietnam, Vietnam the second rice producer in the world. The other extraordinary event uh, that has never happened in and since satellite recorded history in 1979, but most likely for centuries, if not millennia before that, is that between July 8th and July 12th of 2012, this summer, the Greenland ice sheet experienced 97% surface melt at the same time. Basically, all of Greenland, even two miles in elevation, experienced temperatures above freezing. This has grave consequences, of course, for the flow of water uh, into the ocean, which will be impacting not just ocean rise, but what's also called the thermohaline circulation, which is basically the currents that govern temperatures in the northern hemisphere. 
delivering cool water to the tropics and bringing warm water into the uh, northern European regions. And then, of course, there's Antarctica. It is uh, an enormous amount of, of ice. It represents about 90% of the fresh water in frozen form for the planet. And Antarctica, in the western region especially, is seeing um, warming melts that are about five times the global average. Uh, it's very interesting to look at the glacial flow of Antarctica. And uh, this animation helps you understand exactly how an ice sheet um, operates essentially much like a river. It's just much slower, and it's flowing a solid instead of a liquid. But in the dark red areas, you can see the speed of melt both in the, uh, the Ross Ice Shelf and the uh, Ronnie Ice Shelf in the western part of Antarctica. This <clears throat> not only contributes greatly to the uh, rise of ocean levels, Antarctica at this point not as big a player as Greenland, but still contributes about a millimeter itself a year um, in ocean rises, but especially it's impacting its ecosystem. The krill population is impacted by the uh, rate of melt and the change in the chemical com composition of the, um, of the sea water. Krill is the number one food source for both penguins, uh, whales, seals, orcas as well. The entire ecosystem in many ways depends on the, uh, the abundant um, life of the krill population in Antarctica. My experience in the polar regions has been really to inspire, to educate, to bring images that are designed to help people feel connected with an environment that often feels so distant, um, so esoteric and so scientific, um, so antagonistic to human life. But in reality, Antarctica, Greenland, the Arctic are really in our backyard. This little planet of ours, this biosphere, is a lot smaller than it used to be for us all because the impacts of our activities are felt thousands and thousands of miles away from where they're being emitted. I've been very privileged to travel in regions that most people will never have a chance to visit. Um, I've been very privileged to have a camera with me in order to capture these images, both in still form and in film. And I invite you to visit my website. You can go to sebastiancopeland.com and you'll find some of the photos there. And I made a film of my centennial crossing of the Arctic Sea called Into the Cold, A Journey of the Soul, which essentially retraces and chronicles the expedition that I led to the North Pole in 2009. So thank you for watching, and I hope you'll enjoy all this content.